Hey guys, what's happening? So, today is the day. So, I'm going to take my old printer bot and I'm going to convert it to Clipper. So right now I'm thinking I'm running like Marlin.2. something. Uh, not 2.1, not the latest, but um, yeah, I really like the way Clipper looks. Definitely seems pretty cool. Um, so if you're not familiar with PrinterBot, it was like one of the first commercially available metal 3D printers you could buy uh, back in 2014. So this is actually was my first 3D printer. And uh, I mean, this thing pretty much prints 24-7 uh, for, for six, six years, six plus years. Um, yeah, I do actually, because smaller printers actually usually have higher quality um, because you have less moving parts, I mean, less weight. So the print quality is usually a lot better. So Plus it uses up a lot less power than, say, like one of those bigger printers uh, because it requires a lot of energy to heat one of these big beds up. Uh, and then in California, I learned from crypto mining that, you know, power is crazy expensive here in California. So, uh, yeah, just me 3D printing all the time. I mean, my power bill goes up by about 60 to 70 hours a month. Um, okay, so let me show you what I'm going to be doing here. So I've already created some adapters and stuff, but this is going to be, I'm going to run the SKR Pico. This is a clipper board. It's super tiny, but even the original board was pretty tiny. This is the original printer bot board from a long time ago. Uh, I've actually had several upgrades over the years. You know, I went from uh, this board, then I went to like an SKR 1.1, then a 1.3. So I'm currently running Trinamic 228s in there. Um, these are actually 2209 drivers. It's not going to be really a, a review of this board. Lots of reviews on the internet about that one. But really just what I have to deal with to get this thing going. Um, as you notice, the thing actually does have a, a capacitive sensor. And one thing I noticed too cool about this board is there's actually an option for a capacitive sensor or a proximity sensor. And it's a matter of hitting these jumpers. I'm going to go through this, but I'm trying to figure out... Because typically like a BL Touch requires 5 volts. Whereas a proximity sensor doesn't run reliable under 6 volts. Um, so I actually had to run an optocoupler. I put that in like probably 3 or 4 years ago to uh, convert this, you know, provide it more power to run it, like 12 volts. But then, because 5 volts wasn't enough to reliably run this sensor, so then to send that signal back reliably, this should be, I think it's an MPN, normally open, capacitive sensor. Um, like I said, it's been so many years, had to, I've, it's been running for years. Um, okay, so there is some jumpers, so that's why I'm, I'm going to test my multimeter. I'm going to see by actually hooking up the proximity sensor, does it change the voltage at the voltage pin? So typically, normally, like I said, this would be 5 volts because it's powering a BL touch, but if I put a jumper on there, does it connect to the actual higher voltage bus? I'm going to find out too. Plus, I'm going to be running a 7-inch touch screen, so I'm taking that original screen off there, and all of a sudden I'm getting rid of this camera that's in the way. So I'm going to use a this, um, so I'm currently running a Raspberry Pi Octoprint, uh, Raspberry Pi 4. You can't buy these anywhere. <laughs> They're crazy expensive. So, um, I do actually have a bunch of Raspberry Pis over the years I'm messing with. But this is actually a 3B+. Plus, um, which, I mean, it's almost exactly the same as a 4. But one of the cool things, too, is I actually had this set up to go into UART mode. So let me show you that real fast. Let's plug this in the GPI open. So there's there's two five volt. Cool thing is there's two five volt rails coming off here. So those two red wires um, are actually five volt, and then obviously the black is ground. But these two other wires are UR control. So instead of actually having a USB cable, you know, and power going, I'm gonna have this thing running off the board. And I've already got everything working, so I know it works um, like that. And so this actually powers the board and the camera. I mean, I haven't done a, obviously a test print with it yet, but it's and all my testing and getting the firmware correct and, and fired up and like the initial kind of basic configuration. Um, it works. I'm gonna power it up. So 24 volt power supply. Plug that in. Sure that plug that. All right, look at that. Power it on, and uh, we'll come back when it fires up. I have to flip the screen around 180, but that's not a big issue. Um, yeah, I already had the Raspberry Pis. I mean, I was running Octoprint, so... Um, yeah, it's cool that I can actually... It's going to be super... Less wires I have to deal with, you know? If I don't have to have a USB cable. Uh, I still need to design a mount for this, because I want to have this camera tilting like this up here. I'll design that, but... 
I've already designed some, uh, these right here, the screen mounts. I actually have designed quite a few of these different screen mounts for these. I do actually love these, these big screens. Um, all my printers are going to have them, so I've actually bought uh, three of these. But as you can see, we're up and running. Um, I mean, I guess I could just flip the screen. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I, doesn't, I can need flip the screen around. I just got to make sure I can get the camera up there. Uh, I can either in soft work and just flip the whole screen around. Um, all right, so the last thing I need to figure out is this capacitive sensor. I mean, everything else is already solved. Um, you know, I didn't check the voltage because I know I already know because it, under six volts it doesn't operate reliably. All right, so I'm going to take my multimeter out, and I should do it should be a positive, negative, um, and then signal return. So NPN versus PNP, one is a ground return, and the other one's a five volt return. So it really depends on how you have it in software. So power, ground, and uh, signal return. But if I put a jumper on there, that's what it. So right now, by default, it's in BL touch mode, but this jumper right here is either PNP or NPN. What it's expecting to get in return, you know, either ground or five volt, and then um, this jumper here, I guess, puts it in proximity mode. And that's it. what I want to see is, is it going to convert this pin from five volt to twelve volt or twenty four volt? All right, so it kind of got misled in there. Um, so this is actually not the servo pin. This is actually proximity slash laser. The servo pin's down here, so I'm sure I have five volt down here. But this jumper basically changes the Z. This would normally be the servo uh, Z return. Um, you know, like the, the, the Z end stop would come back this way, trigger this pins right here. So by, I think, hooking these jumpers up, you're going to be triggering it to here. So you're changing the pin assignment by changing these jumpers here. All right, I'm at the point of no return now. <sighs> I'm going to tear this thing down. It's, it's kind of, a, I mean, it's worked flawless for years and years and years. I mean, I love this printer. This thing's awesome. Um, even the original bearings in this thing, it's a, I mean, obviously I've changed the to like a BMG type extruder. Um, but it's been flawless, man. Because it's so small, the the, the quality of the prints is incredible. Um, all right, I got to heat it up, pull the filament out of there. Um, all right, and then I'm going to design this power supply. I have an external power supply. It's so tiny, you can't... The original one didn't have a heated bed. Um, like when it came with it, I mean, this is back in the day where you didn't heated beds weren't really common. Um, yeah, obviously I got to replace the fans too. Our fans are going out, so it's a good time to fix everything. But back in the day, we didn't have heated beds. We used uh, masking tape, like blue masking tape. That's how we got to stick the bed. All right. Um, all right, man, do this heat up this thing. I had looked at Clipper for when it first came out, and. I mean, it wasn't really great back then, but I mean, now the interface is, you know, main cell, oh, the interface is way nice. And there's some pretty cool advanced features with it, but I think for me, like, one of the cool things I like is that if I need to make a configuration change, I don't have to totally recompile the firmware. Yeah, I don't have to go into Marlin and like, re recreate a new bin file. Here's a closer look at the bottom. So that's a heated bed I was telling you about. It's like 150 by 150. Um, that's all the bed. The volume is just 150 by 150. Um, because that was the optocoupler I was telling you about. So what it is, it converts, um, I don't have a slack for that to get it to the new spot, but this is what converts it to uh, a 12 volt, because it, originally, the original board didn't supply enough voltage to, to run it. So the cool thing is that board actually has that stuff already built into it, the optocoupler for the proximity sensor. So that's going to hopefully clean up the wire a little bit. Make it a little bit cleaner. And then, all right. So I'm actually going to be reusing the SKR 1.3 board for my $40 uh, offer-up printer. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of doing a lot of conversion with this one, but I want to take the board and reuse it. Get sidetracked very easily, but look at the size of those steppers. That's originally what was on the Z. You know, those are the original stepper drivers. You know, this is an American-made printer, though. This is made here. So this is before Creality. And they were doing all their stuff, you know, super cheap printers. Because this kit was about six hundred dollars. And actually, what's funny is my friend gave this to me uh, because I wasn't really even into three D printers. And then he gave it to me to fix. And then he just got frustrated with it and didn't want to deal with it anymore. 
um, he just gave it to me, and that's what kind of got me into it. And I was like, I fixed it, and I was amazed. Yeah, this is a much bigger board. The one out three. Yeah, these boards of uh, the S Care three is like seventy five bucks. I mean, these things used to be like twenty bucks, and then they uh, like tripled in cost. Um, yeah, so the adapter plate. If you're not familiar with these S Cares, it's the same footprint as a as Raspberry Pi. So I created. A, I got my calipers on. I measured the original board, and I try to try to create an adapter for it. But I'm trying to maybe center this a little bit. That would have more room for the wires. All right, I think my adapter's too close. I'm gonna print another adapter out. Uh, see, these don't have JST connectors on them. They're like the original ones that came with the board. Um, they will fit with that one, but it's just too tight with the other ones. All right, so I designed a new plate here, so that would hopefully it's gonna bring it over now more. Plus I put some air ducts on the back of it, uh, just because you want to get some flow. Yeah, my quality of that on my other printer, I'm still out dialing this in with a clipper, but the quality of the print is not great. So, got to figure out what my settings are. Like I said, I'm going from Marlin to Clipper, so still trying to figure out the whole Clipper thing. So I got some standoffs in. I mean, this is probably unnecessary. I'm not even sure if I made sense already. But the heat sink on the ARM processor, just as a precaution. And this will be the 40 millimeter fan cooling that will cool out the processor, all the electronics, the MOSFETs, and uh, actually I don't even know where the MOSFETs are on this board. I mean it probably looks like they're, they're not heat synced. Maybe on here maybe, I'm not sure. My first print gun, calibration cube. Still gonna mount the LCD. Um, yeah, first print with clipper at least on this printer. Uh, getting the first layer offset, did 30 skirt lines, it's 0.2. Um, text all the fans. I still got to design a mount for this. Well, I already have the mount. I got to mount the screen on there and maybe design a little camera mount for that right there. And then, um, to the height map. Once I'm done with this, I'll flip it over and I'll show you everything I've done to it. Yeah, so one thing I do need to figure out though is I'm actually getting a low voltage warning, and I also notice my lights flickering. But the power supply should be powerful enough to, to do it. I mean, I really should convert over to a 24 volt power supply, but um, then I have to replace all my fans and my, my heater bed is 12 volts. So, making my progress with the printer out here. Put this camera mount on here. I, I put it on the uh, little spot on the LCD. I kind of create this little mount right here. But the issue is, is this could come out here at that. So, this is actually a pretty cool mounting system I saw on Thingiverse. Um, yeah, I just created might make create my own modified mount mount. But I might print out and have it go over here in the corner. I mean get along. Right, so one thing actually that is cool is because I have three pulse width modulated fans. You know, I can control this fan, all different fans on here. Like when the print ends, it's super quiet. So it's unusual, I don't hear it moving. Uh, just because the whole time I've ever had this printer, as soon as you turn the power on, you hear the fans kick on and that's pretty cool. So here's a little buck converter here. So what I need to do is to stop getting warnings. Typically, um, you need you need to bring up to like 5.1 volt. So this thing actually has an adjustable trim pot where I can actually change the voltage. Um, but I'm gonna set that with my bench supply first, and then um, I'm gonna move these wires out the, the the five volts on the grounds out of here and bring it over to my uh, buck converter. All right, so I'm bringing off the uh, two five volt and the uh, ground. And then um, just the remaining is the actual UART ports. So I'm not gonna, I don't have to run like a straight USB connection. So the UARTs will stay there, but the power is going to head over to the buck converter. All right, so if you're not familiar with buck converters, it's just basically it's going to take a 12 volt source, it could be 12 volt, 24 volt, and it's going to step it down to 5 volt. Uh, but because of uh, the way the Octo Raspberry Pi's work, uh, when you as soon as you connect it to it, it's gonna, the voltage will drop. So I'm gonna probably bring this up to about 5.2 volt because I know this will drop about 0.1 of a volt. So anything under usually five volts, you'll start getting warnings on the on Oct or the uh, Raspberry Pi. So um, I want to make sure I get that now because it's gonna be hard to adjust once it's in there. So uh, all right, let's get this powered on. I don't know if I can be able to do this one hand. Yeah, take a look. So just out of the factory, it's 
eight eight. So um, the yeah, obviously that would pop the that would burn out the uh, Raspberry Pi. And knowing how much Raspberry Pi this costs, I definitely want to do that. So I got it at five point one, but I noticed that if I was at twelve point five volt, it wouldn't work. Um, so I had to bring this up to seventeen volt. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. This is actually a Raspberry Pi three and not a four. The, the four is actually use up a lot more power. So that's originally why I thought I could maybe get it off, you know, get away with it on the uh, the board itself. Uh, I like to bring that because this uses up a lot less energy or power than the four. So I'm gonna lower it down to like five. Maybe I'm just over volting it. I'm not sure. Like I can get away with that on Raspberry Pi four though. So. All right, now that I got the. Uh, Buck cover in there. I, I just I like the fact that all my stuff's done over one wire. It's power, USB, all that stuff. So I'm gonna flip it back over. I mean, it already prints great, so I'm um, just gotta finish up the camera mount here. All right, no more lightning bolt. So that's a good sign. Getting the adequate power. So hopefully it's not gonna throttle down any more of the CPU cores. Um, all right, gotta print out the rest of the stuff for the uh, camera. All right, there it is. All right, we're all done. Got the uh, Pi cam going. Had to buy an extra, uh, had to buy a longer cable to reach up there. But uh, all right, yeah, it's pretty great. Um, here is the screen. Camera works. I've already printed out about 20, 20 things with this thing. Um, yeah, it all works great, man. The Pico is awesome little board. For the price, I mean, 30 bucks for 20, 20, 2209 drivers and three pulse width modulated fans. I mean, you can hear it's totally quiet. So, so before when I plug it in, it'd be super loud because I had the, you know, the, the hot end cooling fan, and then I had the MOSFET cooling fan. But yeah, it's interesting coming out here and just uh, hearing it quiet. You know, even the, the things fully on. But um, yeah, I might use it. I might get one of those more of those boards for their things. I don't know. They're awesome old boards. So all you really need is, as long as you're going to control it with like an LCD, you don't really need, you know, these are really huge boards, you know, if you don't really have a lot of access to control, and if you're just running three access, then uh, awesome little board, but, alright, yeah, I know, I've actually, on my channel, I've probably fixed, uh, I mean, for what you guys have seen, about 20 printers for different customers, and, but in reality, I've, I've fixed over 100, 100, probably 150 printers by now, um, and nothing beats a printer bot. Nothing prints better than this thing. Uh, just the quality of the prints on this thing. Just, maybe just because I'm, I'm I'm familiar with it. I've had it so many years. I understand like the acceleration curves and stuff. But um, yeah, this is a really cool printer. Glad to keep on using it. Yeah, like I said, most of my prints I run on this thing because the quality of the print is so good, and you hardly use up any power. We're talking small heat of bed, so it uses probably like a hundred to two hundred less two hundred uh, less watts of power. Um, than the other ones do, but this is Southern California, man. We got crazy expensive power here. So, alright, man. Long live the printer bot.